This is Southport Beach, just up the road from Liverpool. It's on the west coast of Britain. Over there is the east coast of Britain. And hopefully I'll be there this afternoon, having spent this much money on fuel. Wish me luck. My chariot will be this splendid Mercedes 250D, which cost me just 850 quid. For the first 199,000 miles of its life, it's run sweetly on diesel. But from now on, I'm going to try running it on waste vegetable oil. Chips are my favourite vegetables. And this little consignment here was donated to our cause by the local fryer. It's a little bit gloopy, but you've got to remember it's a totally natural product and fully biodegradable compared to regular diesel. Now I'm just going to slap this lot into the fuel tank and see what happens. This felt like absolute madness. We were going to put something that usually goes down the drains into my fuel tank and we'd carried out no modifications whatsoever to the vehicle. That's not a good start. The car's already started weeping. Half of me is very petrified about all of this. Oh, right, the moment of truth. Will she start? Have I broken it? We'll see. She's alive. She's alive. But there's probably a little bit of diesel still left in the tank. The real test is to actually clock up some miles on it. None of this is actually as daft as it sounds. When Wolfgang Diesel first invented his engine, it was designed to run on peanut oil. We all ended up using fossil fuels instead because they were more abundant at the time. We've all forgotten that diesels can happily run on organic matter. It's running just fine. There's always this psychological danger that I'm willing it to go better. And it's all an imaginary thing, but I think this is seriously much better. Feels good, feels athletic. Listen to this. Smell my fat. But the ultimate test was still to come. The motorway. So sustained high speed, a lot of engine wear. This is where it could all go wrong. But it didn't. I was racking up the miles with ease. To find out a bit more, I made a pit stop in Bury near Manchester to meet Jason Taylor, a biopower evangelist. Hi, how are you doing? Hi Jason, all right. Jolly? Yeah, please Jason, to meet you. Yeah, hi. All right. I drove it on straight vegetable oil, uh, but you, you do something a little bit better than that, don't you? Yeah, we put an organic solvent in there, um, and that essentially makes it less viscous. It also helps it start better in the morning, because the trouble is if you put straight vegetable oil in there, it's, um, well, the word is grumpy in the morning, it's sometimes a bit difficult to start. So what do you actually do? Um, effectively, what we'll do is we'll take the oil, uh, we, we, we don't want you know, pork chops being wedged in the fuel filter and stuff like that, it's a problem. So we filter the chips, we filter everything out of it, uh, then we'll add the solvent in and yep. then make it the right viscosity and that's it, you, you're away then. Is there any disadvantage to running on? The only disadvantage to running on biodiesel, certainly if you're involved in collectors, is that you tend to get covered in, in oil, so you have to make sure you're very cl uh, clean or very um, avid to have uh, lots of showers because... Yep. Uh, Otherwise, people will start telling you that you smell. A chip shop smell isn't the only cost. You're also obliged to pay customs and excise 27.1p in duty for every litre of oil you use. Although I can't see how they actually check if you're being honest. Luckily, I was brought up to always tell the truth. Yeah, honestly, I've only used one litre this month. It's been a really quiet month for diesel. Um, I've done an awful lot of walking. A lot. Only about 200 petrol stations sell some form of biodiesel, so I wanted to know if you could rely on alternative sources if you ever ran dry. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, my car runs on chip fat. I wondered if uh, you've got any old chip fat that you don't want that I could get um, to run on my car. This is beef that I use, not oil. Beef dripping? Yeah. That uh, should be OK. Oh, it's set in the backyard. Yeah, if you show me, uh, that'd be great. Just enough to get home on, that'll be fine. I mean, how much oil do you use every day? About half a tonne a week. Half a tonne? Blimey. Give me 100 miles, I reckon. There it is. 
It's really tasty. I think that proves it. Every chippy is a potential fuel station. I've got the crew following behind me. I'm quite intrigued to know what it smells like. Boys, what smell are you getting back there? Chip. The end to our mammoth adventure was almost in sight. Well, we just passed a sign for Grimsby. It says 43 miles to go. Been cruising along at 70 without any trouble whatsoever. All pressure, bang on. Temperature, bang on. Fuel, it's going down very slowly. We haven't run out yet. And there's nothing wrong with the car. It's thriving on the stuff. Don't like to tempt fate, but I think it's going to be all right. 22 miles to go. Nine miles to go. Six miles to go. I can smell the sea air. As soon as the crew get out of the way, you'll, you'll see the sea. Our 200 mile journey had cost nothing apart from about five pounds in duty. A fifth of the cost you'd normally expect. Genius! Well, we've proved that cars can easily run on chip fat. But I'm angry. You see, if we'd done the same trip in Germany, Poland, Italy or Australia, it would have cost us absolutely nothing. But for some reason, the British government insists on us paying duty. Even though I'm recycling a product that would have otherwise been chucked down a drain and burning something far greener than conventional diesel, why is it that the government just aren't encouraging the use of chip fat in cars? They're just too damn greedy.